Hey everybody, it's Jose Laya, and we're back. Today we're gonna look at our mid-year update in the Miami real estate market. You know, after 18 years in this business, I really enjoy providing as much value and help to people out there. And I've really found that these videos make an impact because not only are we up here giving you, you know, our opinion of the market, but we're showing you real data from the market. And I think that makes an impact. Our mid-year update, we're gonna look at, you know me, I like putting real data for you to see. So we're gonna put it in a few graphs. We're gonna look at single family homes and condos. We're gonna look at the number of closed sales and the median price per square foot for some of the more popular areas of Miami and areas that we know well and that we cover. We're gonna look at first quarter data versus second quarter. And then we're gonna get a little deeper and on a more granular level. And we're gonna look at month by month data for both segments for single family homes and condos we're going to look to see if we can spot any trend in the number of closed sales and pricing as well once we've shown you the few graphs that we have for you at the end we're going to follow it up with our summary of what we just saw and we'll also give you our outlook on the miami real estate market so let's jump right into the first graph it's going to be single family homes first quarter versus second quarter here we go Okay, so here we have our first graph. It's for single family homes, closed sales of first quarter versus second quarter, number of closed sales and median price per square foot. And let's jump to that bottom line, which is the percentage change from first to second quarter. And we see positive increases in every segment with the exception of one. So right away, just by looking at this graph, we can tell that there was a stronger real estate market for single family homes in the second quarter versus the first quarter. I mean, you see some of the number of closed sales in each of these cities, some of them, they doubled from the first to second quarter. That shows you the forward momentum we had. And again, we have stated in previous videos that what happened is that in the first quarter or pretty much the first couple of weeks of January, interest rates moved. They went down from a little over 7% to just under 6%. And when that happened, boom, it set off this forward momentum in the real estate market that obviously you could tell, which is why there's a big difference between the first and second quarter here for single family homes. What we're gonna do now is jump into the next graph, which is the same data, single family homes for the first half, but we're gonna look at it on a granular level on a month to month basis to see if we can spot any trends here. Okay, here we go, next graph. Okay, so now we have the graph on a month by month basis for the same set of data that we just saw, single family houses in Coconut Grove, Coral Gables, Pinecrest, and we also took a sample size of Miami Beach, specifically South Beach in 33139. Let's dive into the data. Let's look at the month to month numbers. You know, from what we saw in the previous graph, we did see that from the first quarter to the second quarter, the real estate market got stronger in the second quarter with the number of sales increasing, as well as the median price per square foot. But now let's look at it on a granular level, month to month, so we could see what happened and maybe catch a trend and uh, identify something there. So let's see. Look at Coconut Grove. And I mean, across the board, January was pretty much a slower month. February, things slowed down with the exception of Coral Gables. For some reason in Coral Gables, sales started to jump. Uh, they got jump started sooner than the rest of the market because Coconut Grove, Pinecrest, and Miami Beach pretty much sputtered in February. But then March, you could see that big forward momentum pick up for pretty much all areas. Um, you know, you went from 10 sales in Coconut Grove in March to 20 in April and 20 in May. That's a huge jump. Look at Coral Gables. Coral Gables had went from 28 in February to 52 and then 42. Same thing in Pinecrest. It went from 7 to 13 to 17. So that's that forward momentum we keep talking about. The only one... The only area that we see that kind of sputtered and kind of had the same results, you know, from first month to last month of uh, the first half is South Beach, Miami Beach. And we really feel that's because the inventory there is really, really low um, to begin with. There's not, a num there's not a large number of homes to begin with and pricing has increased dramatically on Miami Beach. So we feel that's why we kind of see the same numbers month to month with the exception of April that only had one sale. Um, all the other months pretty much averaged about four Per month and uh, that seems to be holding but for the other segments of coconut grove Coral gables and pinecrest you could definitely see that forward momentum uh, pick up from february forward and then it kind of started to taper off from may to june i mean 
The only exception to that was Pinecrest. It went from 21 to 30. So it actually increased sales for May to June. That was really the only segment that we saw. The other two, there was that slowdown that we noticed pretty much uh, in those cities and other ones as well. Again, we bring that up because even though the second quarter was stronger, we did start to notice the number of sales taper off towards the end of that second quarter. So that is something to note and something that we're going to keep our eyes on for our next market update, which is going to be on the uh, third quarter to see what really happened. Was it a summer slowdown because families were traveling and focused on traveling for the summer? Or did we hit a little slowdown in the Miami real estate market? Um, we'll see. Stay tuned for our next one. So that's the graph for single family homes on a month to month basis. Let's jump into the next graph, which is going to be in the condo segment. We're going to look at the first half of condo sales and compare first quarter to second quarter. We'll do the number of closed sales um, versus uh, first quarter, second quarter, and then we'll also do the median price per square foot. And then the graph after that will be the breakdown, just like we did here on a granular level on a month to month basis to see if we can pick up any trends. So let's jump into the next graph for the condos. Okay, so here's our graph for the condos. And in the condo market, we covered south of 5th, which is South Beach, but it's a very special area in Miami Beach that we cover no well. We're covering downtown Miami, we're covering Brickell, and we're also covering Coconut Grove. These are the areas where you have a lot of concentrations of condos, areas that we know well, you know, in our 18 years of doing business. And we feel this is pretty indicative of the market in general when you think of condominiums in Miami. So let's dive right in. This is the first quarter versus the second quarter. And let's go right to the bottom line, the percent change between first and second quarter. Now, while the number of sales increased across the board, the pricing either decreased or held on. You know, a little bit different results than what we saw in the single family market. The single family market, we did see stronger gains in pricing and a number of sales. So we've got a, a, some mixed bag of results here in the condo market, but generally speaking, you know, there is a increase from the first quarter to the second quarter as far as the number of closed sales. What we're gonna do now to get a better picture um, as to what really happened here in the condo market, we're gonna dive into the month by month and get a granular look at the data to see if we can spot any trends and maybe a, you know give a better outlook as to what's happening in the condo market in these areas of Miami. So let's jump in to that next graph on a month by month basis for the first half to see what really happened in the condo market here in Miami. Okay, so here we have the data on a month by month basis for the condo market. Again, for the same areas that we just covered, which is South of Fifth, Downtown Miami, Brickell, and Coconut Grove, which these areas of the market are not only areas that we know very well, we've been doing business in for many years, but it's also the areas of the market that have most of the uh, condo buildings in that area of Miami. Let's jump in to the months and we'll notice that while the first quarter to second quarter, there was an increase in the number of sales and a slight increase in pricing in the condo market versus single family homes, you'll notice that that forward momentum of the market increasing sputtered out in like the end of the first quarter instead of going and lasting a little bit longer into the second quarter. Look at January to February, the number of sales actually declined and then that jump start went from February to March. Like look at South of Fifth, there was 12 sales in February and then it jumped up, doubled, more than doubled in March to 30, but then it went back down to 18. And look across the board um, in downtown Miami, Brickell and Coconut Grove, March was the highest month for the number of closed sales for condos in these areas. And then it sputtered out and it couldn't catch up to March again. So. While that forward momentum and sales did increase, it kind of did slow down and not last as long as the single family housing did. You know, that forward momentum that we saw in the graph of the single family homes, it jump started in February and went all the way through to May. Um, versus here that we see in the condo market, it jump started from February to March and then kind of sputtered out in April. So that's something that you know, you can only see when you look at data on a granular level, which is why we like showing you the actual numbers versus just standing here and giving you our opinion. We feel that this data really makes an impact because you get to see it for yourself. Um, not only what happened in six months, but what happened month by month. 
just to give you a better assessment uh, as to what's really happening in the Miami real estate market. More importantly, we're going to stay tuned to our next update, which is going to be the third quarter update. And we'll talk, we'll talk about that um, in our summary because we really feel that this rest of the summer and going into early fall is going to be really, really important as we're starting to see some things shift here. Uh, we're just not certain of exactly what it is. Okay, so that was the data. That was our graphs that we love to show you. Where are we now? In summary, we can clearly see from both graphs from the single family housing and condos that the Miami real estate market was a lot stronger in the second quarter than the first quarter. What we can also see is that the single family housing market that forward momentum that it caught in January and February lasted a lot longer into the second quarter than the condo market did. The condo market, it got that forward momentum and then it kind of sputtered out sooner and faster than the single family housing market. So that's something to note, write that down, because we're going to look very closely at that third quarter data and compare that second quarter to the third quarter data once it comes out. Uh, that's going to be our next market update because we, we are starting to feel some shifts in the real estate market. We just need to determine again if it was a summertime slowdown because families were more focused on their summer travel plans or was it a real slowdown that has hit the Miami real estate market. Stay tuned for our next market update uh, where we're going to highlight that and then I think that's really going to determine you know where we go from here. You know in general though we're in the market daily. The market is still very strong. It's still a strong seller's market. If they price their property correctly, it's going to sell within one to two weeks of being listed. But buyers are, are now able to negotiate the price and even have contingencies in their contract. So we do feel a shift happening. What we can tell you is that, you know, the law of economics, supply and demand, supply is still very low and demand is still very high. And we do feel that that will continue at least through the remainder of the year and for the time being. So that's it for now. It's going to be an interesting rest of the summer and early fall when we get that third quarter data and compare it to the second quarter. I, I really feel that, that that's going to be indicative of what's going to happen and take us through uh, this year. Obviously, interest rates are still hovering around 6 to 7%, um, and we feel that it's going to stay in that range from now at least through the end of the year. That's it for now. That's our first half of 2023 market update. I love putting data and graphs for you guys to see. I really feel that makes an impact. I've heard it through you guys directly, through DMs, through text messages, through phone calls. So we know that what we're doing is really out there to provide value for you and to help you out there. So I'm Jose Laya. Stay tuned for our next market update. Please know I'm always available to help. If you have any questions on any maybe segments of the market that we didn't cover here, feel free to ask. You know, we're always available to help. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Have a great day.